understand the system that you have here, but internationally you're regarded as the leader. Don't say I understand. You don't understand. And the world don't understand the system here. You'll hear Colonel Gaddafi talk about the Jamaharia, pronounced Jamaharia, which roughly translates, in an Arabic term, which roughly translates out the state of the masses. And uh, he says, particularly in this first segment, he lays out his view that historically uh, the governments and the peoples of the world have moved through from where there were at first monarchies and then uh, the French and American revolutions a couple hundred years ago setting up republics or representative democracy where we vote for people to send to a Congress or to the executive branch of our government and so forth, uh, which is the, the, the pattern which most people have in mind when they think in terms of uh, democracy. In the case of Libya, this Jamaharia, they feel that, and what they've been moving uh, toward is beyond the republic or representative democracy toward what they call a, a participatory democracy or a, again, as we say, Jamaharia. It's his feeling that uh, the power of the country, the power, the political power and the economic power, social power that exists within a, a given country should be in the hands of the masses or in the, the hands of the people themselves. And they've got to great lengths to, uh, to institute a system which may seem to us perhaps a little unwieldy or something of that sort at the beginning, but it seems to work for them and it seems incumbent upon us to try and understand things from their perspective. They have something like uh, four million people. It's a relatively small company, country in terms of population. Of course, it's on the northern uh, edge of Africa, bordering 2,000 kilometers on the Mediterranean Sea, four million people. Are, and they've divided the country up into about 2,000 people's congresses. And they've actually built congress halls, meeting halls, where People can come together um, at, at various times of the year. Virtually the entire country comes together and meets in, a, in, in, in these various meeting halls that they have, or people's congresses, and the issues of international, domestic, and local affairs are discussed in a, in a free context. Uh, they establish committees to carry out the activities uh, that are decided upon by the people themselves and great lengths, they've gone to great lengths in order to have what would be sovereignty or real power vested in the hands of the people themselves rather than in the hands of elected representatives such as we are so almost reflexively uh, uh, accustomed to here in the United States and much of the world. It's a unique system. In the first stages there were the monarchies. With a monarch owned the land, and whatever was on that land. And the people had nothing to do but to think he was God's gift to earth. <coughs> this is over. Then there was a second stage, the republics. Where people were allowed to choose the monarch. That is, choose who should rule over them, like a president. Mm. The third stage is the Jahamaria, where people rule themselves by themselves. And they can do away with an election system in order to elect someone who could rule over them. This means the state of the masses. A revolutionary who believes people should rule themselves, not be ruled by government. A man who promised to turn the desert green and is keeping that promise. This was a wish, a hope, since unknown times. There's no practical way by which the people could rule themselves by themselves. So they had to substitute something for that, and that was by electing representatives or members to a parliament. Now we have the answer.
Now we have the answer to how people could rule themselves by themselves. And that is through people's conferences and through people's committees. Just as we build a parliament hall, the public system, we build so many local halls for the masses. Not necessarily built upon the same lines as the parliament. It could be even an open space, even in the street if you like, in a mosque, a church, anywhere. And these people decide whatever they wish within these conferences. Then they choose people's committees to implement their decision. Through the people's congresses and committees which Gaddafi created to take the place of traditional government structures. There is no parliament in Libya, no prime minister, no president. Gaddafi himself has no official function. He's simply called the leader of the revolution. The committees are supposed to rule the country, and maybe so. When we were there, we had permission from Colonel Gaddafi's office to take pictures of the port in Tripoli. The committee that runs the port said no. The port was their responsibility, not Gaddafi's. The scenes we finally got were taken from a hotel window. Gaddafi's revolution and his oil wealth have no doubt raised the standard of living of the Libyan people to one of the highest in the Middle East. He has started massive agricultural projects, even in the heart of the desert, to make Libya self-sufficient in food by the end of the decade. Part of what he calls the Green Revolution. Profits from oil allow him to import foreign technology, even expertise from Americans some of whom apparently do not agree with Washington's antagonism towards Gaddafi and Libya. We had no problems with the Libyan government whatsoever. The politicians from back home caused us nothing but problems. And the secretaries of these people's conferences and these people's committees meet annually to synthesize the decisions of the people's conferences, the basic people's conferences. Each group can form a union or start a union. But the members of the unions are at the same time members of the people's conferences. So power or authority is in the hands of the people's conferences. But they've set up a, uh, a system where all the citizens in the country uh, own by right their own home. Uh, they have a dictum in the country, in need freedom is latent. If you are in need, then you cannot be considered uh, truly a free person. It's an interesting concept in itself. So socially, they have established that every person owns their own home, every person owns their own automobile and means of transportation. That's part of a context of freedom. Um, all citizens, men and women, have uh, access to education free, socially run, through the, uh, through the university, men and women, and everyone has uh, access to elemental health care. They've also socially um, uh, built their infrastructure. They've put uh, roads and electricity into every little village, and they've uh, done a great deal socially to guarantee equity uh, and the distribution of the wealth that came from the, uh, the very rich oil deposits that, that Libya possessed. First of all, the wealth or the resources of a certain community is the property of everybody. The wealth of America belongs to all Americans. By what right should 400 families, for instance, divide it among themselves? And I think other journalists should be uh, giving that the country, in his view, uh, a, a legitimate hearing rather than uh, out of hand, uh, you know, rejecting it, as seems to have been uh, the, the policy here as far as media and, and our country is concerned. It seems that way to me as an as a independent producer. Uh, um, that at an official governmental level it would be suggested, or even at a corporate level, and certainly on the part of the people themselves of the United States, it seems to me would do well to give this country a, uh, a consideration other, in the, other than the propagandistic 
and we haven't had any time to go into any of the charges that are normally leveled against them, most of which have proven to be false in a historical pattern. Virtually all of them have proven to be false uh, in, in a historical pattern, and we should get out of our reflective uh, view of thinking of them in some terrorist terms or something of that sort, because it does not do us well to not have ourselves informed about what the realities are of that. Now, wait a minute. I know what you're thinking. You were thinking, giving the power to the people? Nice words, Gaddafi. But who says you actually followed through with these plans for a direct democracy? Well, according to Libyans, Gaddafi gave up power in 1977, and since then it has been in the hands of the people. Why do you think he has so many supporters who insist on calling him the leader of the revolution? It would be awfully patronizing to assume all of these supporters don't know what they are talking about. That we know Gaddafi better than Libyans, and that they never noticed that Gaddafi was a horrible dictator taking advantage of them. You would think that since 1977, they would have noticed that Gaddafi was all talk and no action. Well, what about these rebels? These people who are fighting for democracy? First of all, have you noticed that they are proudly waving around a monarchy flag in the name of democracy? Have you also wondered why the fighting is lasting so long in Libya if they are armed and have NATO, the most powerful army in the world, backing them up? I'll tell you why. Because of the Gaddafi supporters. The media is ignoring or belittling them at best. They constitute the majority of the population and they support their leader and they don't need guns. They have their strength in numbers. Most importantly, they are the real freedom fighters fighting for a democratic system that puts ours to shame. Do you see why Gaddafi has been such a threat to the world and to politicians since he came to power? Do you see why the West has tried to assassinate Gaddafi since the Green Revolution? Do you see why it's highly likely that everything you know about Gaddafi is probably bullshit? Just look at his supporters. No one in power would like Gaddafi to spread his ideas of giving power to the people. Despite what CNN is trying to make you believe, Gaddafi is one of the few politicians of this century with so many supporters, and his ideas are a huge threat to the elites. Please remember that Libya had its democratic revolution 40 years ago. The Mubaraks, aka the rebels of Libya, now want their power back. This is the real face of the rebels, power-hungry monarchists who hold a grudge for having been robbed of their power 40 years ago. Let's stop Libya from moving backwards.